Well, we are here at the Yamaha booth, and of course, you know, there's been a ton of talk about Yamaha's new CL consoles, uh, the long-awaited refresh to a lot of their audio consoles. And I have Kevin Kimmel here. He's with Yamaha, and I will guarantee you that he knows way more about the CL than I do. So we're going to let him talk and kind of just give us an overview of some of the cool stuff that's happening with the CL consoles. Okay, so a quick overview. There's three models. There's a CL1, the CL3, the CL5. This is the CL5, the largest model that we have here. This, 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 the CL5 is uh, 72 mixable channels. Uh, there are uh, 34 faders, and they're in fader banks. We've got an A section, a B section, a C section, and your master section. We'll get back to that in a minute. It is, it's got 24 mix outputs. Get to the second set here as well as eight matrix outputs, your stereo and mono, and because you can take an input directly to an output or to a matrix, uh, it is a 35 bus console. We've got uh, a number of new things here uh, in this series that, that are pretty interesting and make it easy to use. We've pulled, from, we've pulled a lot of ideas from um, all of our consoles or many of our consoles over the years. There's, there's, ch there's uh, channel encoders on every channel for, as there are on a PM5D. In the name window, there's a lot of information there as there is on a DM2000. We've got two track playback and record on a thumb drive like on an LS9. There's obviously the central logic uh, uh, way of working from M7. There's, um, and then there's a lot of other innovations as well. So there's eight different colors. You can see the colors here. Uh, these read very well as well as the, uh, the names do outside and the screen uh, is very effective outdoors as well. So you can name and color. There's eight digits in the name. Uh, and if you, the shorter the name, the bigger the digits. So old guys like me, it's easier to see. But if you want, you can put a lot of information in there. Um, <clears throat> let's see, there are 16 DCAs on this console. There's 16 user-defined keys but there's also four user-defined knobs. The user-defined knobs can be used uh, for any number of things where you want a rotary. I'm gonna hand you the mic here for a second, but watch, watch this operational style here. So this is set up, the bottom encoder is currently set up as a touch and turn. So whatever I touch on the screen, whatever's highlighted, I can make an adjustment. So very quickly, you can go around and make adjustments without having to come, come away from your work surface. Select another channel, go about it some more. So, as usual, the fine knob's gonna be very, very popular. Uh, I think those knobs are gonna get worn out. CL5 has the output meter bridge built in. The CL1, the CL3, that's an optional and a, and a removable meter bridge. Uh, three thumb screws comes on and off very, very quickly. So, let's talk about, uh, let's see, let's talk about the rack system. So, if we go to the rack, there's 16 31 band graphic EQs, which can be 32 flex 15 graphic EQs. The effects rack is an 8U unit, so you've got eight effects engines. If we go in and we take a look at uh, the layout in here, it's, it's been given a facelift from, from the view that you may know from other consoles, but we've repositioned things as well. Uh, the RevX stuff is up top. Some of the newer things we put up at the top, the more popular things. We've also got more in the library. If you went to the library, there's a lot more RevX stuff there uh, to choose from, and we've redone the templates. So right out of the box, that we find that they're more useful. We separated the actual effects from the dynamic devices and EQ devices, and below this line, these are all VCM uh, devices. So that's virtual circuitry modeling. Um, if you don't know them, you should check them out. For example, this, in fact, let's just take a look at this open deck. This open deck is a tape saturation device, so it emulates uh, a multi-track machine. You can select what type of machine, what vintage machine, what type of tape you would use, and even what, how many, what's the tape speed is, 30 ips or 15 ips. So imagine taking your drums, creating, <clears throat> pardon me, creating a, a two mix, put your drums in through this, insert this over the two mix, put it at 15 ips where you get a real fat, warm sound like you did in analog machines of the old day, and you now have a completely different sound and drum kit. So that's VCM uh, technology where we go down and we model down to the, the component level in, in vintage devices. So in the effects rack, in addition to the 32 15 band graphic EQs, you can also put graphic EQs in the effects rack. And when you do, then you can insert a graphic over an input. So for users that need to do that, this is your access for that. The next rack over is the money. So this is all virtual effects, uh, excuse me, VCM technology, these devices here. <clears throat> For example, we've got a couple different Rupert Neve devices. It's Portico 5033 5-band EQ. The, we've got the warmth 
of, of Rupert Neve, and part of that comes from his transformers, and we've got the transformer emulation down. So one thing that's good to know is this assist button gives you, gives you these square numbers on here so you know what rotary, what encoder it is doing what. Very useful, but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's Rupert's 5 NEQ. It's really spectacular. <clears throat> we also have his uh, 50, 43 compressor. Also has a transformer emulation. This may look uh, familiar to some. It's an optical uh, compressor. It is, uh, and all the meters work on these, on these devices. It's one of my favorite switches, old analog digital switch. But these, these, these all sound spectacular. You gotta check them out. This may look familiar to some. And then, so these are all emulations of vintage pieces of gear. This is an original device here. Um, uh, let's see, let me, let me insert this real quickly, and you'll see how fast this is to do. So I, doing it left-handed for the first time, it's a little weird. Sorry, left-handed, not left-handed. So, so, of course, now my track isn't rolling, but this is, a, this is our uh, dynamic EQ. The interface is great, so let me see if I can just make an adjustment here and so see what happens. So I can select the frequency, the Q of it, and it, um, it's, it's dynamic, dynamic EQ, as I mentioned. You can go in and, and, and get rid of popping peas, you know, uh, almost sibilants and voices, whatever, wherever you need it. But the interface is great, works, works spectacularly. The, the, the look of it is cool, but more importantly, it sounds excellent. Uh, so that's the premium rack in a nutshell. This is 8U unit. There's, uh, each of these devices is dual mono or stereo, so you can have 16 instances of uh, premium devices. This is a Dante-based network uh, system. So Dante's inter integrated into the system, and so here we're looking at the 64 channels of audio rep uh, that, that represent two stage boxes. So to the right, there's a couple of stage boxes sitting there. So for troubleshooting purposes, imagine uh, I'm, trying to get, I'm trying to get my A2 to find a box and he's in, plugged into the wrong box. I could simply press a button on the console here and do that. Or if I want to be specific, I could say, no, really, I think it should be plugged in there. Where are you? And that's just me pressing a select button on the knob, on the uh, console itself. So back to the screen here, we've got uh, representing eight, eight uh, 16, I'm sorry, 64 channels of audio. Let me look at the Dante setup. I think I've done something to freak out the network here. The, um, you can have four consoles on the network at a time. You'd, this is where you'd set the ID for it. So where you'd set up whether you're gonna run Dante in daisy chain or in redundant mode. Dante supports 32-bit on the network, so you can select 32-bit there. And if you're, we have a fixed latency system. It's two and a half milliseconds throughout the console, regardless of what you're doing in the console. But if you have a lot of devices on the network, you may want to increase the network latency as well, and you can do that here. Here's your Dante patch, quick view of 64 channels, what you're pulling from what box. There's a library here, can, put, can store up to 10 different uh, library settings for your Dante patch. So imagine you're gonna, you're gonna have a, a, different, a rotating stage. You want to put stage boxes you know, from stage A versus stage B, you'd go in and you'd pull different inputs in that way. That's where you do it. Um, and the other boxes, the yellow here, are representing eight, eight I.O. boxes that are not on the network, but there's availability for any one console to control eight stage boxes. So on the Dante network for CL, you can have 256 channels of audio pulling in 64 at a time. And that's done through the Dante patch. Uh, let's see. What else do I want to show you here real quick? Um, there's, is that okay, is there a real quick thing? The mute, mute groups can be hard mutes, or if you zoom in here, you might be able to see that I've got this set to minus 20. So they can be a dimmer. Uh, pretty cool if you just need a docker in any number of situations. So you can have, you can sign it to a, to a user defined key and during sound check, somebody needs to yell at somebody and just duck the whole system that way. There's a lot more granularity in the um, recall safe mode. So it's a channel by channel. You can have different recall functions for each channel if you like. Channel linking is, is uh, there's more granularity there as well. So you can very easily just say, there's my choir link come out of there, there all, you see all your A, there's a type A, and there's B, and you can choose what is linked, what parameters are linked for each different group. You can, there's, you can have up to 26 different groups of things linked, each with their own set of parameters assigned to them. Uh, let's see, in a nutshell, ah, no, let's talk about the fader banks real quick. So we've got, as I'd mentioned, so here's how you get around and pull into the fader, various fader banks what it is. 
on the, on the center section here, you've got input and output. So we've got this a multi-purpose button as to what these, how they will function. Um, so I can, uh, I can customize group A, let's say, or fader bank A, and we can have inputs and outputs and DCAs. Same for the center section. The, the master section on the far right, I can go in and I can, I can choose this instead of being my, my left and right. I can say I want that to be my money channel, actually two money channels. So I can do all my flader, fader flipping on the rest of the console, but always have my hand on the money there. Um, and because of the way that you can use the, 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 the assign function of the encoder here, I could always, I can tell this to always be my money mix. I can, I can have it follow the last mix that I choose, or I can tell it to lock in and just be mix four, let's say, if that's my, my lead singer and I want to have it. So I always have, my, I always have very quick access to my money output and to my money input while being able to maneuver around all the other channels uh, on, the rest, on the rest of the console. And if I, if I had done something like that where I made those money channels and it's not my stereo, but I need to get to stereo very quickly, I just go here and I've got my stereo. So everything's always accessible throughout the console. Um, something else coming along soon will be uh, uh, Nuendo Live, an optimized version of Nuendo that will get you 64 in, 64 out on a Cat5 directly to your recorder. The colors and names from the channels will transfer over to the tracks within Nuendo. Um, and as you're, uh, you'll have transport control on the screen and when you're doing your show and you're recalling scenes, it'll put markers in. So tomorrow, when you got to do virtual sound check, you'll have easy access to, to your various songs and parts of your show. Uh, there is a uh, stage mix for CLs is going to be here. And uh, you've, there's a shelf here for an iPad. You could have your iPad sitting here. Maybe you want to do your EQ on it when you're not walking around. But when you need to, you certainly have stage mix to be able to walk the room or walk the stage and get into the parameters that you need to with, uh, with your iPad. In addition to that, there is, um, <clears throat> there is CL Editor, which is similar to what we know as Studio Manager. But for all the other consoles, you have Studio Manager running in the background, and you would need it to pull in the editor for the various consoles. With CL Editor, it's a standalone app that once you download it, you, um, you simply plug into your console. It asks you for the IP of the console. You don't need MIDI drivers. You don't need Studio Manager running in the background. You give it the IP address of the console. Do you want to connect? Yes. Which direction? You tell it 15 seconds later or whatever it is, you're, you're up and running. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. And then lastly, for, um, for interconnectability, I would say, there is a um, uh, there is console file converter. This has been around for a while, but it's going to include CL series. So if you want to take an LS9, an M7, or a 5D file, show file, and load it into CL, you'll be able to. And the, and the other direction, pick a direction, any console, those files are all are all uh, compatible with one another. And lastly, I would say uh, a couple of things. So we saw the stage boxes. The bottom box over there is the Rio 3224. It's 32 in, 24 out, 16 analog out, four stereo AES outputs. There's a rotary switch on it to choose the ID of the box. So if you have eight boxes or more than one box, the, the system knows what it is. And, the, and it's a five space uh, unit. The, Network connections on the back, uh, but it gives you. Ind but there's indicators for the for the network status, both front and rear. Uh, the the box on top over there is a three spaced unit. It's the Rio 1608, and it's 16 inputs, eight outputs, no stereo uh, outputs on that. The back of the consoles is the same on each. There's three MI card slots, so there's another 48 channels of interface possibility there. There's uh, five in, five out uh, DPI. There's uh, a possibility of hooking up an external power supply for redundancy. It uses the same power supply as your 5D and M7. Uh, there's AES, two-track out. Um, there's a couple other things back there, but it's the same throughout the entire series. So in a nutshell, that's CL5 for Yamaha Commercial Audio. Well, that's a lot of stuff, and obviously most people are going to want to know when are they shipping, what's the, you know, how are you going to be shipping the various consoles, when we, can we expect them in the open market? Sure. Uh, we're going to see the CL5 and the Rio 3224, the larger of the I/O boxes, first. And they'll be they'll be hitting the streets uh, before summer. The, uh, the the CL1, the CL3, and the Rio 1608D will be coming later this summer. The Wendell Live will be coming later this summer, um, and so we'll, we'll we'll have we'll have this console out there pretty soon. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot, Kevin. I really appreciate it. As you can see. There's been a lot of buzz about these consoles, and they are really cool. They're very sturdy looking, and they're very, very sturdy. It's a nice work surface. So these are definitely worth checking out if you've been, if you're a Yamaha house, or even if you're not. Um, there's a lot of stuff packed into these consoles, so you need to make sure you get on the website, Yamaha's website, and look at them, or contact your system integrator.